Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to Straight Talk on 106.9, the XFM. I'm Bill Paul, and we have a long-distance hookup for you today that's quite off the wall, uh, stretching all the way from California to Detroit. And uh, first of all, from California, we've got Shane Wall. Hello, Shane. Hey, Bill Paul, how you doing? Just fine. Uh, tell us uh, about your record company. Boot Camp Enterprises, subsidiary Boot Camp Records. Okay, and where are you located? We're located in California. And what part of California? We're in Southern California. Okay, and uh, you have uh, in the past introduced us to a lot of performers from your label. Can you remind us of a few of the people that you featured? Uh, we brought you Carlos Ferrar, we brought you... Uh, Amy Perrin, uh, we brought you Chris Doran, and today we're going to bring you Uncle Ill. Okay, and tell us a little bit about Uncle Ill. Uh, special project. Uh, Uncle Ill is from Detroit, legendary in Detroit, but uh, we're going to let the world know about him. Uh, he's got a song featuring Eminem uh, and another artist named Hush, and uh, we're bringing it to you today. All right, and Uncle Ill, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. How you doing? Excellent. And uh, tell us, how did you uh, hook up with Eminem? Uh, I was just boys from the neighborhood, man. Uh, in Detroit, every rapper that's dope knows each other. But we all know one another. If you're good, you know, your reputation speaks for itself, and we all just know each other. Uh-huh. And uh, so whose idea was it to get together, and how did that uh, go? Um, I guess it was all our idea. We come together pretty much and uh, mess around, do things every now and then, and after so long, the mess around, I decided to put something down for real and see what happened. All right. And uh, um, tell us a little bit about this song we're going to hear. Uh, we signed just uh, three real good uh, MCs showing skills, um, uh, versatile, uh, just pretty much vers versatility, and it's pretty much bringing it to um, anybody out there that we consider competition. Just letting you know a little bit about the Detroit flavor. Okay, and tell us about Detroit. How's it going? Detroit. Uh, Detroit is in a recession right now, but it's, it's up and coming. Um, it's a place, it's uh, urban. It's a place where pretty much everyone has to get along. You know, pretty much got to live together, you got to play together type deal, you know? Mm-hmm. And That's how about... what it is there. And how about... Uh, everyone gets along because we have to. And how about downtown Detroit? Is it coming downtown back? Downtown Detroit is... On and popping always. Uh, we got the Detroit Tigers down there. Uh, Mike Illich runs things here. He pretty much has downtown on lock. And uh, Detroit down uh, Detroit um, downtown is pretty much uh, where everyone goes to party at often. You can see all the who's who's downtown Detroit whenever you come here. Well, I know I come to Detroit every year for the Concert of Colors, which is a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful uh, right. music event. And... Uh, I'm uh, and I I see Detroit really happening whenever I go there. Oh yeah, it's definitely on on, on the come up. I mean, pretty much all the big big artists, entertainers, they always come to Detroit. They always like I'm, I was going to like uh, Alonzo Mourning. He was here for uh, an NBA thing, and he was here like a couple of days early just taking some flights to hang out in downtown Detroit. You know, and he even left a day later than he was supposed to. It mm -hmm. happens all the time. People come here and they want to kind of hang out and just you know hang out in downtown areas. That's what they like about Detroit. And how about your career? How did you start out, and uh, you know, how did you get your opportunities? Um, pretty much um, with everyone here, it's kind of like with Detroit. I don't know how there's another place, but with Detroit, it's like a good place to pretty much test how you are as an artist. You go around, you make a name for yourself here, and then you get the stamp of approval to, do, to go on and further your career. Once you're known here, then it's time to pretty much move on and make yourself known elsewhere. And that was just a phone call from, from, to somebody that knew somebody that knew Shane, and Shane pretty much did the rest. Who kept enterprise? And ab about what percentage of your career is with a live audience, and what percentage is in the studio? Um, everything I do pretty much is re recording wise in the studio. Live performance wise, I've done every major venue here in Detroit. Um, the Fox, uh, Royal Oak Music Theater, um, the Palladium, St. Andrews. I've done 
majestic magic. Like every arena here, I pretty much done. There's the one place I can say that I haven't done here in uh, Detroit throughout Michigan, pretty much. So it's pretty much fifty fifty. I record it and I go out and I perform. And uh, the medium that you're in has pretty much covered the whole world now. Um, uh, rap and uh, everything related to it has has taken over. Yeah, um, it, it, it's been kind of crazy to see how rap evolved. You know, it went from how it started off in the 70s to the 80s, then the 90s, you think it's going to die out, and here we are in this, you know, 2000 with this new sound. It's, it's, it's crazy the way rap, you know, evolved. It's just changed over the years, but it's still here. You know, something that people said would never last. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they didn't think it was seen up in the juice to uh, pretty much be serious with, but it's a force to be reckoned with. It's, it's everywhere. It's huge. And uh, are, are the rap artists the modern poets? Definitely. Everyone has a story to tell. Um, every artist pretty much um, through their lyrics expresses themselves. The beat can be anything. It can be a pop beat. It can be a techno beat, a house beat, any kind of beat, even the country beat. But the most important thing to a rap artist is his, is his message and what he's saying within his lyrics. Whether it's just um, egotistical, whether it's hard times, whether it's love, whether it's party, it's, it's pretty much uh, their self-expression. And what does your message tend to be? My message varies. I'm mean, I talk about things that pretty much happen in my everyday life. Parties, relationships, family, um, hanging out with the, with the fellas. It all depends on the, um, the song, more or less. And uh, do women that you date uh, end up in uh, songs that you sing? Honestly, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I have a song called With or Without You, and it pretty much was uh, directed toward a certain relationship that I was just in. With or without you, I got to keep it moving. You either with me, cool. If you're not, either way, I got to do what I got to do. I mean, that just happens all the time. Anyone that's an artist, I'm pretty sure they take some of their real personal life and they put it throughout their songs because it gives them something to write about. It motivates them to be creative. And what kind of emotions do you like to leave an audience with? I mean, some performers, they like to get an audience angry or jumping or in love or uh, mellow. How would you like your audience to walk out of a venue? Um, I like them to pretty much understand where I'm coming from with a particular song. When I do a concert, I like them to know about me as a person, and they hear all aspects. They hear about love. They hear about anger. They hear about fear. They hear about happiness. All sorts of emotions run through different types of songs. So I know one thing for sure, after Uncle Ill's show, you pretty much get me in a nutshell about the time this concert's over, and you know pretty much what to expect, and you're pretty much pleased with what I've done. So the emotion is generally happy after I'm done. It also seems that uh, musicians in whatever field are not just musicians anymore. They start out uh, with their concerts and start out with recordings and then go on sometimes to television, to film, um, get their own line of cosmetics, get their own line of clothing, uh, whatever. Uh, Do you see yourself as a brand uh, that's going to expand in these areas? Definitely, definitely. Um, Branding is really important. To, I believe every artist, you have to brand yourself. Once you make a name for yourself, and your name is as big as it's going to be, why not? You know, if you can have, you know, a chain of stores, you know, after your name, great. Uh, a line of cosmetics, clothing, uh, apparel, shoes, whatever. I mean, it all, the sky's the limit. You know, movies. It's like once you have a house, become a household name, you have to take advantage of that. And it's like a lot different than it used to be a rap. A lot of people didn't see rappers to be able to do things like that. And then you get, like, the early rappers, you know, the Ice Cube, the LL Cool J's, the Queen Latifah's, go on and show you that it can, can be done. Certainly, so yeah, certainly uh, there's a lot of history there now. Um, and uh, do you, uh, how would you like to be uh, thought of by uh, the millions of people that are going to know who you are? I want them to know that Uncle Will is a hard-working, real good artist. That is that works hard deserves anything he gets. I don't want the fans to really, really enjoy my music. I know um, every artist is different, but I want most importantly them to hear me, hear me out, 
I'll be able to relate to it. Everybody uh, has a different story to tell, but there's always someone that can relate to your story. Always. Now, what about Detroit has shaped your philosophy, your sound? Would you have a different sound if you grew up in Los Angeles or New York? I would I would think so because um, not that I've done anything in New York or California, but I can say that from the from what I've heard, a lot of um, style and sound pretty much sound similar in New York as well as uh, California. They're pretty much um, in Detroit. There's a certain sound here. I try to pretty much stay open-minded to my sound, and that sound like no particular area. So when people hear me, they don't really know where I'm from. If I don't tell them where I'm from, they have no idea where I'm from. They could think I'm from the south. They could think I'm from the west coast, east coast. They have no clue. And when you're recording, do you need to record in front of a live audience, or do you uh, record uh, in a studio in the quiet? And that's funny. Um... It's funny because I, I tried to record with a live audience, but I remember working with Kid Rock before, and as I was in there, before I even got done, Kid Rock uh, was telling me, don't say it like that, say it like this, and I wasn't even done yet. So before I could even get out what I was trying to express, he was already trying to shape me before I could even finish what I was doing. So from that point on, I said, okay, nobody's allowed in the studio until I'm done shaping and expressing my words the way I want them to come out. I wouldn't let nobody else in the studio with me. So from now on, I just pretty much do it by myself. And when I'm done, I feel comfortable. Then I'll let you in and hear what I've done. <laughs> so thanks to Kid Rock, I don't let nobody else in the studio with me anymore. All right. And, and uh, have you got any uh, good stories for us with some of the people you've worked with? I mean, you've worked with some big names here, uh, Kid Rock, Eminem. Um... Nothing really comes to mind right now, but I do know that everyone that I have worked with uh, has been a great experience. I've learned from some of everybody. You know, from Eminem, I've learned how to bend words um, different ways and how to, how to um, get the most out of every word and syllable. Um, from Kid Rock, I learned how to be professional at all times. I learned a lot from everybody, even when I hang on D12, believe it or not. I learned how to really, really, um, they had like a carefree attitude. And I learned how having a carefree attitude can also, you know, affect your career as far as don't worry about what nobody else is doing, do what you're doing. I used to always, like, I guess kind of worry about that sort of thing. And today, as a professional recording artist, I don't think about that anymore. I just do what I'm doing, and I don't care what everyone else is doing. So from working with so many different artists, I've learned so many different things, and it's, it's benefited me big time, definitely. So no, no stories come off the top of my head. Um... That I like to talk about, <laughs> but definitely a um, great learning experience from everybody. All right, and show business also has led a lot of people to uh, drugs, alcohol, um, gangsterism, uh, gambling, mm -hmm. all all kinds of uh, the dark side. I'm wondering, uh, uh, has any of that temptation come your way, and uh, what do you think of that? <laughs> uh, that's that's um. Uh, I think a touchy subject. I come up in a family where drugs and all that, you know, was pretty much within my family. And I learned early on that those things, you know, were bad. Not from doing any drugs, but just seeing the effects that it caused the family. You know, whether it's my uncle, you know, my dad, uh, whoever, when you when you see things like that, you pretty much know what it's already about. I kind of feel like the people that don't come from that, they don't know what that's about. And when they get in Hollywood, I think that, they think everybody's their friend, and they tend tend to j jump on the bandwagon and try things out. If you have like good parents, my mom, my grandma did a good job raising me, and I knew better, you know what was right and what was wrong, as well as seeing the effects of drugs and alcohol in my family. You know, you kind of you you, you kind of um, grow up in a certain kind of way. But I think the people that have no clue what that's about, they tend to try things thinking they'll be okay because their friends are okay, and I I don't. I don't do any drugs, alcohol, smoke, none of that sort of thing. But I don't smile at anybody that does do that. But my thing is, I, I just think a lot of the artists that get involved with that, either they were already doing it, or they think that when they meet their new industry friends that they're really their friends, and they decide to try it. They were really their friends. They wouldn't even ask them to try it, because they know it doesn't nothing to hurt you. So it all depends on how you come up and, and what your background is like. 
as far as drugs and alcohol go, if you understand what I'm saying. Oh, I do. All right. And um, how about your fans? What kind of reaction do you get from them? Do you get a lot of email? Do you get a lot of mail? Do you get a lot of uh, stuff in the mail from people? I get uh, tons of appreciation uh, email. People tell me that. I've heard, I've heard like one guy told me that I'm not Eminem dirty, but I'm not Will Smith clean, and he appreciates me for that. He um, he was expressing that he likes the way that I do my own thing, and it still sounds good. I get tons of uh, responses. People telling me like, "Wow, I can't believe there's another good Detroit um, uh, Detroit artist out there," and no one you know yet knows about you, but they will real soon. I get I get tons of mail, uh, email. And it's all been good. I haven't really received anything negative at all. And, it's, and that's been a great feeling. You know, I mean, I, I love all the mail that I get. And I try to respond as much as I can. I get a lot of offers to do collaborations with other artists in other states, you know. Um, got a couple of things from the U.K. Didn't even know people knew who I was. But I'm, I'm finding out that my name is getting bigger and bigger. And I try to reach out to as many people as I can. So it's all been positive. It's been great. And are you on Twitter? Yes, Twitter. Facebook, MySpace, you name it. You can catch me on Twitter at Uncle L. You can catch me on Facebook at The Real Uncle L. You can catch me on MySpace, you know, uh, under Uncle L. Anything you want to know about Uncle L, you can pretty much Google me. Uh, BootCampEnterprises.com, I'm there as well. I'm everywhere. And how did you uh, get in touch with Shane and get involved with Boot Camp? Oh, uh, man. That's like a blessing in disguise. I was uh, at a point in my life where I knew to further my career, I needed to get out of Detroit and go toward, go where the music is happening at, which is California. So um, I kept trying to get there, but it financially just wasn't happening. I just Things kept happening, and I kept having to spend money for certain things. So I hit up um, my cousin and asked him, and he got back to me, and he knew somebody that knew somebody that knew Shane. And I gave Shane an arm call, and um, he was reserved at first, but he's like, um, what's your name? I said, Uncle L. He said, I'll call you back. I didn't know what that meant. And I guess he went and Googled me and did a bunch of research on me and found out all these things, and he called me back within a couple of hours, and he's like, let's work together. And the rest has been history. It's been great so far. It's been great. And what kind of things do you have to do to work with a record label? Um, <clears throat> the most important thing is to be professional. You know, nobody's going to hold your hand and say, hey, you, you got this going on. You know, you wake up, it's time to be there. Or, hey, you got to go promote this. You got to pretty much be an adult, be responsible, take care of your own business. And um, you pretty much got to be re- responsible in a nutshell. There's nothing really um, too difficult. If they decide to work with you, you got to give them the courtesy and appreciate it and do your very best and be your best at all times. And I'm also wondering if uh, one day you woke up, looked at yourself on a poster and said, holy crap, that's me. I'm, I'm doing it. Do you have a moment of self-realization? <laughs> um, I have uh, music right now on iTunes.com. My album, y'all know, my album, The Doodoo, and my, my current album, Gassed Up, and my new single with Eminem, We Shot. And when I first looked at that, thanks to um, Shane Wall and Blue Cap Enterprise, he got me on there, and I first looked at it, it did kind of uh, hit home as, wow, it's really happening. You know, I've been doing music for, for a while, and to know Shane only three or four months and have so much going on is it, it, it's it's unreal. It's like this has really happened. I, have, you know, it's it's these moving so fast that I can't even um, take it all in. I'm just rolling with it. But when I do stop, sit down for a minute, and look at it for myself, I'm like, wow, I have these albums up here. You know, I'm doing great. People are starting to know who I am, and it's, it's wonderful. You go to iTunes.com. You can search Uncle L. I'm I'm up there, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And it's it's. Still, every day I'm amazed by it. Every single day I'm amazed by it. Even when I watch my videos, if you go to youtube.com forward slash world collective videos, I have four videos on there. Uh, Do Dot Dippity featuring Champ Town, 
um, <clears throat> keep on medication and gorgeous feature and genesis. Um, I look at that and I'm like, I'm actually in video. I'm actually on, I'm a recording artist. I'm actually doing this. It's, 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 I, it's unreal to me. And it's getting bigger every single day. I can't believe it. Every single day is getting bigger. And if we want to find out more about you, where's the best place to start? Man, um, GrooveShark.com right now is doing a huge, huge campaign on me. Um, you go to GrooveShark.com, type in Uncle L, I'll come up. You go to iTunes.com, search my music, I'll definitely come up. BootCampEnterprises.com, that's where Shane Wall Company resides, I'll definitely come up. Um, SugoMusic.com, forward slash WeShine.html, that's Shugo, S-U-G-O. You go there, and you see the song with Eminem. You see my medication um, song. My videos are there. I'm um, pretty much anywhere. And if you really, really can't find me, that's like Google. Type in Uncle Ellen to Google. I'm everywhere. There's no place that I'm not. Well, let's talk about this song that's breaking right now with you and Eminem. Tell us about it. Because mm -hmm. we're going to listen to it. Um, the song with me and Eminem, We Shine, um, also Hush, it's three MCs coming together, um, showing skill, with the world know what's up with um, Detroit MCs and how we get down as far as our style goes. All right, and uh, do you want to introduce the song for us? Yes, sir. What's up, everybody? This is your man, Uncle Ill. I'm chilling, and you're going to, about to listen to my new song, We Shine, featuring Eminem. Check it out. Thanks for being with us, and here comes We Shine on 106.9, the XFM. Oh, thank you, man. Real, real, it's shine like a gold nigga. When I bust on the mic, I bust yeah. with real hard rock. Every time I pick up the mic, I'll be When I bust on the mic, I bust with real hard rock. Real, real, it's shine like a gold nigga. When I bust on the mic, I bust with real hard rock. Every time I pick up the mic, I bust with real hard rock. When I bust on the mic, I bust with real hard rock.
put Detroit up in their rap songs. Cause without us, their careers wouldn't last long. So like a generation, we've been passed on. Now it's our time to shine, put your glasses on. Got these A&Rs and labels with binoculars. Looking in, jocking us and not jocking yours. Too many groups follow trends, unoriginal. Using loops that transcend every bitch in you. Don't ever try to say this is a ghost town. One million rappers in this bitch, they need to slow down. Evaluate the situation, all the rest are killers. Fly hoes out on Jefferson with drug dealers. Two years in the joint, nobody's touching hush. Try to say you put us down, but you're under us. Now who the fuck of you is just coincidental. When you rhyme, you're even worse than the instrumental. You're just a phone tapper with no backbone. Talk this shit, I gotta click that on 